Washington, D.C., the seat of power. Looking like a war zone. Protesters ignoring the curfew, met with flashbangs, rubber bullets, and tear gas. Don't shoot! Don't shoot! All just a few minutes away from the White House. In New York, more mayhem. Macy's, an icon of the American high street, ransacked by looters. But a clampdown did reduce the carnage, led by a telling presidential pledge. I will fight to protect you. I am your president of law and order and an ally of all peaceful protesters. Even before the curfew, outside, the reality of that promise played out. The crowds aggressively dispersed. Soon after, the path was clear for a stunning moment of political theatre. The president clutching a Bible at an historic church damaged by fire. Today, apoplectic pastors accused him of using it as a cynical prop. We find the misuse of the Bible and the church as a mere photo opportunity deplorable and disgraceful. Yeah. To them, it felt like a haunting return to a deeply traumatic era in American life. He even brought horses out here. He used uh, the military and cleared people out as if uh, we were in the 1960s with uh, the civil rights movement. In Philadelphia, Mr. Trump's political rival pitched the prospect of a starkly different country. But I promise you this. I won't traffic in fear and division. I won't fan the flames of hate. I'll seek to heal the racial wounds that have long plagued our country, not use them for political gain. But is promising not to be Donald Trump enough? What the president can legitimately say is the city now looks a lot more calmer and it's seen far less violence. Even with that, it doesn't have to hurt him. His political ascendancy has been dominated by division. What could make the difference in 2020 is just how diverse the electorate is and how willing they are to get their voices heard. One thing is for certain, this country is still consumed by unrest and there's a burning anger that may be very hard to extinguish. Cordelia Lynch, Sky News, Washington.